problem I have with Rumble is if I'm not talking politics, it's hard to get any traction. You know, so how does Rumble evolve from just like a free speech, political, uh, right wing type of haven to business, entrepreneurship? How does it evolve into something bigger than just the politics? Sure. So first off, I just uh, for transparency's sake, I should tell people what my involvement is with Rumble at this point. So, you know, I created Locals. I was one of the co-founders of Locals. Eventually, we merged with Rumble. So in, in essence, it was an acquisition. So Rumble acquired Locals. They sort of operate as separate companies the way Facebook and Instagram kind of merged, but they're separate companies. We sort of have that model. Um, my brother-in-law, who's the CEO of Locals, and he was my original guy, right, you know, putting the whole thing together. He's still in charge of Locals and all that. I am not an employee of Rumble. I, I guide on some policy. So I'm, I'm basically a consultant really related to free speech type stuff. So how do we publicly fight this fight, the fight that I've been fighting, you know, very publicly for a long time. So I'm not involved in like the nitty gritty under the hood stuff. I'm not like at board meetings or, or anything of that nature, just, just to be clear. Uh, but in terms of your question, which I think is a legit one, you know, it's interesting how these sites sort of operate because there was a clear need for a free speech version of YouTube in essence. And that's what Rumble kind of filled the gap on. What happens is that then pushes mostly, let's say, political leaning people there first, because those are the people who are most sensitive to the free speech issue. So then it starts becoming political. And not only does it start becoming political, it starts seeming like it's right wing political because those are the people who are being silenced. But that's just the reality of what kind of drives people there first. I can tell you that the, and you can just check out Rumble for this now. I mean, they're going very hard, hard on gaming right now. And, you know, they're doing power slap with Dana White and some UFC stuff and, and a bunch in that space, but it's going to take time to build. So yeah, like doing an entrepreneur podcast, that may not be fully what people are going for at Rumble right now, but you know, you have to let the ecosystem kind of, kind of develop. And, you know, fortunately, People that tend to be interested in politics, let's say from like a right leaning perspective, they also are interested in entrepreneurship uh, because they believe that it's on them to figure things out and all that kind of thing. So I think a lot of it's just like you got to let the ecosystem kind of shake out and kind of figure out what it is. But everything takes time. But, you know, I, I would say this, that in the nine months that I've been on Rumble and it's only nine months, I wasn't even using Rumble before uh, before we fully connected with them on the locals front. Uh, we have 500,000 subscribers. I've been on YouTube for now. It's got to be, uh, it's got to be about 11 years and we have 2 million. So the growth on rumble really has been pretty spectacular. So spe speaking of independent media, and I hear what you're saying, Dave, about as rumble gets more traction, more people are there. It's can start to expand out like the riches and the niches. Then we expand on top of that. Yep. I have to go here because this is a, it's something that's very important to me as a Floridian. A few years ago, when the entire country was locking down, and the, just the world was in chaos. Everyone was closed. I really respected what Ron did, Ron DeSantis did, to open up Florida. He, he was under immense firepower. Uh, uh, fi he, was in, he was under immediate attack from the media, from the government, everybody. And he really fought hard to open up small business. I honestly, when I was looking around what's going on in the world, I was like, I feel like I won the lottery being here in South Florida. Yeah. Well, you don't have to sell that on me because I uprooted my life, two companies, a whole bunch of people, my family, and, and here we are. Yeah, it's, it, but it's bananas how quickly people have forgotten like how important that I, I really feel like he changed the course of history just by saying, we're not going to close down the businesses. We're going to open up the beach. We can go to the playground. It, crazy how quickly people forget. But I, I wanted your opinion on something because we're in the middle of this presidential campaign and I don't see DeSantis anywhere. He's, he's nowhere. Like I see Vivek all over the place. Um, but like, I feel as if Ron has underestimated the importance of independent media and podcasts in YouTube. I don't see him on Patrick Bet David. I don't see him on Tim Pool, Bill Maher, Rogan. Has Ron DeSantis underestimated the power of independent media? Well, first off, I think, I think there's a couple of things here. W number one is he's still the governor of the state of Florida and he's got that, that is his main job. And of course, you know, the funny thing about running for president is you're auditioning for this other job while you're supposedly doing this job that's very complex and whatever. He has had to come back a bunch of times. You know, we just got through this, this last hurricane, Adalia, that I'm sure you're aware mm -hmm. of. Um, where, where, and I would just contrast that with someone like, like Vivek, like this is his job now, right? So he can be out there and everything else. But in terms of the strategy itself, I actually agree with you on that. And I've been pushing him towards that both personally, I've discussed it with him privately and publicly 
Uh, I've said it on my show. I want to see him on Rogan. I want to see him on The View. I think that's where he shines. When he, when he gets in the viper's nest, and they're lying about him and attacking him and everything else. That's where, to me, he's at his best. He's not necessarily at his best when he's just kind of telling you the good things he's done. It's nice to hear, and it's refreshing. And as you said, you're a Floridian, so you've lived it. And that's great. And we shouldn't forget that history. One of my frustrations with Trump lately has been that he's trying to erase that history. And I, I don't appreciate that because this was the citadel of freedom mm. for the rest of not only the country, the world during COVID. So that that's that. But yes, I would like to see him do a little bit more of that. On one of those specifically, uh, PBD, Patrick Bad David, he was supposed to do it about two weeks ago. And then because of the hurricane, that got delayed because he was also going to come down to my place in Miami after he hit Fort Lauderdale. So I'm sure that'll be rescheduled. I will also tell you, you know, he, people were frustrated that he didn't do Megyn Kelly. He did do Megyn Kelly. Uh, you know, Glenn Beck, I don't think is mainstream anymore. He's gone on Glenn Beck a bunch of times. I think, I think it's all going to come around in that regard. I would say at the same time, the guy has, uh, he's in the midst of going to all 99 counties in Iowa. And at the end of the day, and I suppose we'll find out in January, which is a better strategy. Do you just, you know, flood the media, mainstream, alternative, whatever. Do you just flood that endlessly, which, you know, it can go viral and it feels like there's a certain energy there, but nobody really knows how many votes that turns into, or do you spend your time on the ground, 99 counties in Iowa and go into every single one of them and making sure those people vote for you? Because no matter what the polls tell you, if you're to believe the polls right now, if Ron DeSantis wins Iowa, every single thing that we've all been talking about for the last six months is completely out the window and the race completely changes the next morning. So I, I think you got to give it a little bit of breath. That being said, like, I think they probably haven't rolled out like the most enigmatic, en enigmatic, uh, campaign ever. It probably should have been a little bo more dynamic. They probably should have thought about this a little bit more. Um, but they're banking on competency and I freaking hope that that's what people are looking for. Thanks for watching Mark Svant Media here. We're going to help you create a better content in less time and turn that attention into income. If you love this video, you're going to love these videos here. Click the one, me and my team specially selected this just for you. Click the link, check out the video. I'll catch you here next time on Mark Spot Media. Peace.